Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm excited to be here. We have Gabrielle Sandoval, aka Gobs, in the house today. You know I'm a CrossFit enthusiast, longtime lover, and this dude has been in the game about as long as I have. Owns a thriving gym in Colorado and is crushing it, still doing the events. We're going to hear his backstory and how uh, fitness is really driving the passion to help other people and in turn keep this gym running and thriving. Gabriel, welcome to the uh, Tumor and Tequila Show. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. I, I'm excited to be here. Um, this is a really cool setup you got, so I'm, I'm really stoked. We're excited to have you. Well, and, t- and you're a fellow podcaster. I didn't even know this. So we've literally, when did you start CrossFit? Oh, geez. Uh, it, it's like embarrassing because I tell <laughs> I tell people um, I should be better for how long I've been doing it, but I'd say like 13 and a half years or okay. so. Okay, so like 2008-ish? Uh, probably like closer to 2009, 2000. Okay, so we I think I was like literally like one year earlier than you, but you didn't, I mean, I didn't get it for the first year, so I was probably, the same. so we, yeah, we've been running a lot of laps together, Yep. and we've only crossed paths, so I feel like the same events back in the day, and then recently I competed at Battle of the Boxes, which was an awesome mm-hmm. time last year, and reconnected, but I didn't know you had a podcast as well. Yeah, oh, we just started it. It is a new podcast. It's called Off the Couch Podcast, um, so you can go check it out on YouTube, Spotify, or um, iTunes, and uh, it's similar. We're just talking to, you know, people about just getting off the couch and moving like that's one of my favorite things is movement and so like anyone that's like a mover like let's let's talk so and we have multiple topics so i love it it's uh, these are passionate humans i mean you know crossfitters number one rule is all we talk about is crossfit that's right so (laughs) well we're gonna talk about that but before we get into all the business stuff i want to know about young gobs because like i didn't even know your backstory until i read your bio and i was like and i like the people that have taken their own trail and i didn't realize how much you did so this is so serendipitous Tell us about your story and kind of how you got to where you are today. Yeah, for sure. So when I was younger, um, I was always active. I think this was at a time when maybe ADHD wasn't as prevalent. Okay. Um, so I wasn't like ever diagnosed with it, but I, I probably had a level of that because I was just always very like hyperactive. As you can see, I'm like fidgeting right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> and when I was six, I my brother got me into wrestling. Um, so I started wrestling when I was six and I did that for like 10 years. So I wrestled for 10 years and it helped me get some Before of that high school, out. like middle yeah. school. So okay. I did high school or sorry, I did um, like just a, a regular local league and then I did middle school and then I did high school okay. and then I stopped when I was about 16. So I started when I was six, stopped when I was 16. So that's like the first active thing that I like really got into sport wise, um, six years old. And then I started to play the next sport was football. So I started to play football when I was in eighth grade. Um, I'd done, you know, some street football and stuff before that. And then um, eighth grade, I also did basketball and I did football and basketball like for two years in high school. And I always knew from a young age that like I just love being active and I enjoyed more being outside than I did, um, you know, sitting, watching TV and stuff like that. And then somewhere in the midst of there, I picked up skateboarding and snowboarding as well. So like I just I love movement and being active. And, uh, you know, it was funny, kind of this like serendipitous story. I was just thinking about this the other day when I was uh, um, a senior in in high school. I had gym class and I would lead the warm ups for, huh. for gym class, really? like the stretches and stuff. Guy? So <laughs> yeah, my uh my, my, my gym teacher, um, Mr. Mares, shout out, brother, if you're still at Horizon. Um You went to Horizon? Yeah. Oh my I went to Eagle Crest. Oh really? Yeah. Damn. See, we were crossing paths when we were world. like zero years old. It okay, is a small go world. on. Um, yeah. And so he had me lead the warm ups and I don't know why. Maybe I I didn't ask. Um but anyways, and so I'd lead stretches and stuff. And you know what's so funny? I've just been doing this lately and I keep thinking about it is I will lead stretches for my CrossFit classes very similarly to how I led stretches <laughs> when I was a, a senior in high school. And it's just, it's so crazy how like those two things happened to meet up where it was almost like that was like foreshadowing for my life Absolutely. of like, hey man, like this is kind of what you're meant to do. And it also like solidifies for me what I'm doing like fitness and active wise is because like you've been doing this since you were young and whether or not you recognized it, like I feel like there's a part of me that was meant to do it. A hundred percent. We talk about that comes up on this podcast all the time that's why i always say i'm like tell me the young self i'm like it's so funny i did this and because universe god madonna i always say that whatever you believe is telling you which way you should go we're just not listening till the process happens yeah but okay so we're in middle school stretching what happened after that yeah so <laughs> i was actually really good at wrestling i went to state a couple times i never won um and i just like always like i feel like been athletically gifted got into football eighth grade started playing um 
linebacker, which wasn't my best position. I'm like not. Were you pretty big in high school? I was at the time. You know what's funny about that is uh, I think a lot of high schools do this is my coaches would fabricate on the, like the stat sheet, like oh, my, sure. my actual size. Yeah, and they put yeah. that I was like 190 and like <laughs> six foot one. And like I, I don't weigh 190 right now. I weigh like 187 <laughs> or something. And um, I've never been six feet tall in my life. Okay, uh, I, okay. I got to 5'11 at one point. Um, and now it's like five ten and a half. I don't know. I think I'm shrinking. I did have like my disc shrunk a little. Yeah, I had back surgery, so that um, we could talk about that too. But anyways, so like I was into sports. I always knew that like I wanted to do something athletically, like just move my body. Played football. Played a little bit of basketball in high school. Wasn't like I was good at basketball, not like amazing. I was better at football. I was probably the best at wrestling. I should have stuck with huh, that. Yeah. But um, in high school, I had a little bit of like a divergence where I, I decided to kind of go like test the party scene. Okay. And I kind of got sucked into that a little. And that okay. really s- took the sale or took the wins for my sales as far as like uh, pursuing sports past high school. Um, just because I, I like wanted to go chill with my friends. For sure. And, like, you know, I was underage, but I was drinking. Um, and oh yeah, you know, there was one time I went to football practice high. Um, really? Not one time. I think I did it a couple times. I was going to say, I think. What high school did you go to? Horizon. Oh, it's Horizon. Okay, so I was thinking Horizon Middle School. But no, either no, way, no. Eagle Crest is close. Anyway. Horizon High School. Yeah, yeah I know okay. where Eagle Crest is. Um, and so I just got into that. And that really took the wind out of my sails as far as pursuing something athletically. Because, like, everyone I like, talked to and even knowing myself, like, I definitely could have went to college, yeah. like, for sports. But I just didn't. So I stopped playing sports after college. And kind of got out of the fitness realm or the sports realm for a while. And, like, I was like, I think I want to explore this party scene. And okay. Wait, do you think that shift was, like, because of the crew you were hanging out with or just the time in your life where you wanted to, like, kind of figure yourself out and figure out? Because I think these divergence in the path are actually really important. Yeah. You know, and I, I think there's a lot that goes into that. But um, some of it's, you know, I grew up with a single mom. So she was working a full-time job. She would be gone till like 7 p.m. And so I was left to my own devices as a young teenager. Okay. Uh, so that's not the best recipe for success. But the other one's like, you know, I, I'm a big person of sayings. Like I, you can ask anyone, like people at my gym, people that know me, like you have so many sayings, we should call them gobisms <laughs> because I just have sayings. Like, I don't know, sayings always stick with me and they're, they're good to regurgitate. They're, they're like, you know, ridiculous. But they're saying for a reason and so i have these sayings and one of mine is like you're a culmination of like the five people you hang out with the most right and i think a lot of it had to do with i was just hanging out with um maybe the wrong crowd they're great people um you know i'm friends with some of them till this day really good people but maybe just the crowd doing the wrong stuff so i was influenced in a different direction because of the crowd i was hanging out with so yeah that had a lot to do with it i would say you know my advice to people is like, that's, that statement is true. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're hanging out with people that are, you know, whatever they're doing, chances are you're going to probably be doing something similar. Right. So, you know, if they're, you know, super ambitious, business, sports, whatever, you're probably going to be into that. And if they're, you know, maybe like the finer things of life, like parties and stuff like that, you'll probably be into that too. So right. it just really depends. So I think a lot of it had to do with the crew I was hanging out with. And at the time, that was more important to me than pursuing a higher level of sports player anything like that so right. i did that for a while and then I, I finally like a lot of things happened but found my way back to fitness but it wasn't until i was about 23 well so and you graduated high school you did not go to college you went to the no. mountains right no yeah so, so I, I like this i think this is a key piece of the story because now and this is i mean we graduated 20 years ago so uh, i think there might have been more i know <laughs> insert the cortisone as i say right? that uh, yeah it's <laughs> i it, it, I think it's it's more socially acceptable now to not go to college. Or to, I mean, YouTube University, there's all these ways you can learn trade schools, which I'm a major advocate for, recession proof, all the things. But back in the day, there was pressure. I don't think I had a friend that wasn't talking about going to college or beauty school or something specific. There was a plan. So uh, that being said, a lot of the people that I thought, I'm like, do they really want to go to college that didn't? I think they should have taken that year to travel, to figure it out, to do because you- if you don't do it young, then you turn, you know, 30, 40, 50, and then you're taking that gap year. And yep. it's like, man, I think maybe just do it from the get-go. So t- tell us about that decision. Yeah, I decided um, not, you know, I was, I guess, ahead of my time. And I was like, oh, you, don't, you, you, you don't need to go to college there to make money. Go. And that's not actually the reason why I did. I wasn't that um, intuitive at the time. It was more just me and my friends and own devices, me being a rebel. I'm a rebellious person. So I was like, I don't want to, like, fit this cookie-cutter thing of like, you know, go to high school, go to college, get a nine to five. And anyway, so like I had it in my head, I was like, I'll just do, you know, my own thing. I have a better idea than, than everyone else. Um, 
but it was at a time when going to college was very popularized compared to like now there are other options where it's like oh, okay you don't want to go to school there are other ways to be successful so like let's sure. let's look into that so this was at a time pressure to go to, to college was high but I just you know like I said I was I was in the partying scene I was into drinking I was smoking some weed at the time and like I just didn't want to go to to school like for those reasons like I didn't want to fit into that typical cookie cutter but also like I never loved school yeah like, I've always been um, a very intelligent and um, like an intellectually gifted person like mm -hmm. I consider myself wise and school to me was always a in my head was a waste of time or was boring and so I just didn't want to go do it. I was right. like, this is boring. I was the type of person, like, I wouldn't study for a test and I would ace it. And, okay. like, if I had to do something last minute, I could just throw it together and do it and it would end up working out well. Um, so school never interested me. It didn't grab my interest, which is, like, I think a pitfall of school is, like, there's one size fits all. Yeah. And we need to find different ways to educate people. Anyways, that's a whole other conversation. But I decided not to go to college. Um, and... Were you looking at all or was it like a definitive no, not pass? No, no, it okay. was just more like a hard pass. Also, my like grades in high school weren't great. Okay. Like I, I barely graduated. Um, my senior year, I had to take night school classes. Did just, you at least get an A in just, gym? I did get an A in gym. <laughs> okay, good. Um, you know, the, the only class I think I got an A in my senior year. You know what's funny is I, I when I put my mind to it, when I was a sophomore, I got a 4.0. I totally um, believe it, yeah. And, and then I just, you know, I fell out of that and was hanging with, you know, a different crew, I guess, that wasn't into Social getting, slide. that wasn't into getting good grades. Um, That was more into the partying. But, um, yeah, so I barely graduated. I had to take night classes. And I remember I had finished taking my night classes. They were in downtown Denver. My school's way up north. And I took the, the like, certification that I finished this class to my advisor or my dean or whatever from high school. And I was like, yeah, I took this night class. I, you know, I know I need the credits. And this was literally, like, a day before, I think a day before graduation. Nice. And, like, I was convinced I wasn't going to graduate on time. Perfect. And, like, I was going to, I knew I was going to graduate, but I was like, I don't think I'm going to graduate on time. And I was like, whatever, you know, I don't really care. My mom, my family was pissed. My mom was really pissed. Um, you know, sorry, mom, I caused you a lot of stress. <laughs> um, and I, I handed her that certificate, and she's like, Gabe, she called me Gabe. She's like, Gabe, you get to graduate. And I was like, what? And so like the day before graduation, I found out I get a walk. Um, they had like an extra cap and gown that like wasn't even my size. So I ended up walking, graduating and, you know, just barely finishing high school by the skin of my teeth. It probably wasn't a good idea for me to go straight to college. Right. Um, so I ended up taking, I think I took like three years off okay. or at least two and a half. Um, the first like year was for me to just be like a young teenager to do what I wanted. I um I had a job. I got a job. Um I've always been in the service industry, so I had a job at a restaurant. It was probably Olive Garden at the time or Tokyo nice. Joe's, one of the two. Um and I had an apartment with some roommates and we paid rent and we just did whatever we wanted and drank and like smoked and um I did that for about a year. And then I had like some weird crap happen with like our friends group. We got into some bad stuff. Some bad stuff happened and I ended up deciding I wanted to move to the mountains. Okay. Um, at this time I'd been snowboarding for like, I picked up snowboarding, I think when I was like 12, it was like the first time I went. It was big in like early nineties and yep. then, like really started to get big Sean White and the whole thing. Yeah. The first time I ever went was with my sister we went to Copper Mountain, I remember. And, um, I couldn't barely stand up, but so I, I got into it when I was 12 and by this time I was like, I don't know, 20 or so. So I've been doing it already like eight years. And so I decided, I was like, I think I want to like try to like become a professional snowboarder oh, okay. or something like. I don't know. It sounded fun. Yeah. And um, so I moved to the mountains. I moved to Silverthorne, which is uh, by Keystone. We have a resort here, Keystone. Um, it's my favorite mountain till this day. So I we moved up there. I got a job at the resort. We got like a this. Ticket checker or something. Um, I was guest services, so I wasn't. Those are called lifties. So I wasn't a lifty. Um, I was guest services, which is kind of just like a way of saying you do like everything else that involves a guest. So like every now and then we do ski check or locker check or like just walk around and like help people. Are you lost? Here's where you go. Gotcha. Um, random stuff like that. So I moved up there working at Keystone, and um, I snowboarded almost every day because I was trying to become that's awesome a competitive snowboarder. I, I did competitions, but um, I wanted to take it to a higher level, but I quickly realized, um, you know, I think the closer you get to like a goal like that, like, you know, whether it's professional snowboarder, professional crossfitter, professional, whatever, the closer you get to it, 
the more you realize how hard it is to actually get there. It's kind of crazy how that happens. Like, I think I'm like the most fit I've ever been, but I also am humbled by how hard it is to be a games athlete. Um, But so as I got better and stuff, I just realized like, man, these guys are just on a whole different level. Like there's like, I I was good, but like good is not amazing. And they're amazing. And I think professional snowboarders have this gene where they just like, don't, have fear i was gonna say there's a fearless i had a level of fear i like a lot of people say i'm reckless and like i don't have fear but like i have a level of it that's just not a professional level i guess because like they'll look at like a 80 foot jump be like oh cool let's throw it and like i'm just like (laughs) if this goes wrong i could die and yeah i think the cuss for me that starts to happen around 50 feet and bigger um other than that it doesn't really happen so anyways i I quickly realized that like okay this is probably not gonna happen and it might have if i would have stayed up there and lived up there and tried harder um but you know i was at that age where I didn't have to try too hard for things to come to me naturally with like in sports and in um, academics, like I didn't have to try too hard. And so I was kind of frustrated at how hard I had to try to make that dream happen. And, you know, this is all like stuff I realized years later. I didn't realize this at the time. It was more just kind of going through it. And then um, after that first season, I decided um, I wanted to go back to school. Oh, what like what flicked that on? Do you think you like partied yourself out or you once you see that difference between good and great and like I do think our competitors like a fire is always there and then it just takes one thing to stoke it and be like and the focus like aligns. Yeah. So, I mean, there was like this catalyst that I ended up moving to the mountains, which kind of I think is what actually forked my story a completely different direction. Um, it, it's kind of a deep story or like whatever you, you want to share. Into. Um, I'd love to hear it. So. When we were younger, um, my buddy, my best friend, his name was Andy, and my buddy JP and Sean. Uh, sorry, I'm incriminating you guys. Um, it's okay. It's it's in the past. Um, we used to have like a we used to sell a bunch of weed. Okay. And um, so you're an entrepreneur from the get. Yeah. Dead serious. I'm funny, but also serious. It, it is. It, it is like now it's legal, so it's like I, I don't know if drug dealers, weed dealers even exist anymore. Anyways, um, <laughs> so it, it's funny. It was illegal at the time, so uh, we would sell illegal weed, and you know we're like 19 or whatever. Um, and we were actually pretty good at it. Uh, we were probably the biggest in like the area. Seriously. As far as like selling weed, we used to pick up like uh, like 25 grand at a time. Like, yeah, it was, like, yeah, it was a lot. Um, making more money back then than now? Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. <you. laughs> probably. Uh, like, to be honest, probably. And it was much easier Little work. Too. Yeah, I was going to say. It, 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 it's, it's a sweet gig if you do it right. Like, you know, yeah. people come to you. you We're not I guess, advocating I guess you have that to trust. Yeah, yeah, don't do it. But don't anyways. Get those and, five people yeah, around you. Um, and then they come and they buy and then they usually will smoke you up. So it's like, you're not even smoking yourself. So anyways, um, <laughs> so we had this, this, you know, this big production going on and um, everything was going good. We are making stupid money and things were going good and my my buddy i think you know like it's just always we always want more for sure and i think that greed started to set in and uh, my buddy decided that he wanted to start selling something a little bit harder with maybe has more money potential which is cocaine okay um and i was always never like about that i didn't do it i didn't like it i was like this is a different world that like i said i've always had like a decent head on my shoulders or at least an understanding of like situational awareness that's like you know weed's one thing but i was like you know cocaine like i've seen movies and like just stuff and like you know people get killed over this well, stuff. well this like, sounds exactly like your intuition with the snowboard jump like you can go right to the 50 foot but past the 50 foot line you've got Big air, and then you've got cocaine air. So we're yeah. not going. To, yeah, 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 no, so, I'm, yeah, no, I we're not you. going that big. Yeah. And you know, maybe that is something I, I'm, I'm good at recognizing my own personal lines. I, I don't know, but that was a line that was like, I don't want to cross this. And so they, they, um, my buddy Andy, he wanted to do. We were living together at the time, and we had a conversation. I actually did with him. I was like, Hey, I don't like this. I don't think this is a good idea. Um, we had a lot of money, yeah. and so he started picking up a lot of cocaine at, at a time. Well, you know, the local market didn't like that. Um, okay. There, you know, other people are like, who is this random person that just all of a sudden is like trying to take over the local game? Yeah. Which, yeah, in, in that. And those are small towns. Yeah, it was in Thornton. And, and, you know, in that realm, it's, you know, it's called stepping on toes. It's like stepping on other people's toes, taking money out of their pocket. You know, you're not you're an entrepreneur. You, you sell drugs. So somebody else yeah. has a lot of money and comes into your territory, starts selling drugs. They're taking money out of your pocket. So you're not happy about it. So anyways, um. One of my old friends from high school was actually into that um, cocaine selling game. And he was mad that my buddy Andy was picking up so much and starting to sell. So he told two of his friends that we had 100 grand at our house and that they should rob it. And 
So he like is the one that told them that, which was a lie. There wasn't that much money. Um, maybe about half that. Anyways, um, so they like staked out our house and waited till we left. And um, my buddy Sean was still there though. He didn't have a car at the time, so they thought the cars were gone. So anyways, they broke in the house. They find Sean. They beat him up. They hog time in the basement. Like we're like hitting him and stuff. Jeez. And he called my buddy Andy and was like, "Hey, we need the code to the safe." Well, the only people that had the code to the safe were me and Andy and. He never need. He'd lived with us for a while. He years. He never needed it. So like Andy knew something was wrong right away. Just hung up. Went over there with two of our friends. Um, encountered these guys. Like beat one of them up, and the other guy came out, and um, he ended up shooting my buddy Andy. And so he shot and killed him. So. Oh my god. Yeah. So this was my best friend at the time. Um, and it just like completely rocked my. It rocked all of our worlds because he was kind of the ringleader of what we were doing. Yeah. And um, it was just a huge like like just shock to everyone and especially because we were so young we were like 20 like wow so like not only to us our friends group but the parents like man it was it was a rough time my girlfriend at the time like her mom's like you can't date him anymore um date me because of that world that i was in i don't blame her if i was a parent i was i would have yeah. said the same thing anyways so that happened and so that was the catalyst like our operation kind of fell apart after that wait, and, that, wait why were you not there i think you know, and I, I don't, I've never like told her this, but I think my girlfriend saved my life because um, I was dating her and she was still in high school because I, I, she was a year or two younger than me um, in high school. So uh, yeah, she was two years. So when I was a uh, senior, she was a sophomore and we were at prom Wow! because she was a senior at the time because I had graduated. Okay. And if I hadn't been at prom with her, I probably would yeah. have been there. Like Ooh, pretty much yeah. guaranteed would have been there. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I remember getting the call that night. Um, That's heavy. Yeah. And so that happened. It threw a big wrench in, in everything. And kind of like, we just didn't know what to do. We, me and my buddy JP kind of tried to pick up like where we were left. It just, it fell apart. And I think part of me subliminally is like, I just need to get away from yeah. all of this. Like the life I had built um, I, was like, I just need to get away for a while. So that's why we decided to move to the mountains. Me and my buddy, Sean, he was a snowboarder too. Um, and we had some other friends that like weren't in our realm. Like, you know, like they were friends from high school that I would like sell weed to. And like, they were like, we're going to move to the mountains too. So there's actually a crew of us. So we ended up moving to the mountains and just having this nice snowboard crew, you know, working at the resort and just snowboarding every day. And it ended up, um, you know, I think it was to get away, but it ended up being like one of the best things that ever happened to me. It had to be healing just to be in nature and like yeah. be by yourself and so get your head together. To, to get out of that world yeah. and to just like, um, you know, show myself that there's more than just, you know, this hustle or trying to make money or whatever it was that I, I thought I wanted to do. And, you know, being out in nature every day and yeah. like just snowboarding with your friends and just having that good time just really opened my eyes that, you know, other things can be just as appealing if not better like way better um yeah. and then i my girlfriend at the time um she was about to start college her and her friends and i i think a lot of me was like i just overall kind of felt like a loser i guess um because i was like man like these people younger than me are going to college like i just didn't really see the direction of my, i had no idea where my life was going to go yeah. um i was just like i don't know if i'm gonna live up here and snowboard or like go to school and I saw that my girlfriend and them were starting college and also like living in the mountains was a lot of stress on our relationship because I lived up there she lived down here mm -hmm. we didn't see each other a ton so I think like motivating factor was like I want to go back to school for two reasons I want to figure out what I'm going to do with my life and um number two is I, I want to be close to my girlfriend mm -hmm. because at the time like you know we were in a pretty serious relationship so that was the catalyst for me when moving back I lived in the mountains for a year um and then after that you know it was fun and I ended up moving back and going to school, and I started school at Metro University the next year, I think. Dang. And I never, like, I always thought growing up that college was something, like, that I would never be able to do or afford or get into because I just didn't have a lot of help, and I, I didn't, like, pursue help. So I was just like, oh, like, it's not something I can do. I'm too, like, I'm too poor or whatever it was. I just convinced myself that it wasn't for me. And how quickly I got in was kind of am amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, I quickly disproved to myself. I was like, it wasn't that hard. You were just making excuses. So, anyways, I, I, I got in. I got accepted. I remember being surprised that I even got accepted. So I got accepted. Um, and I started college that next year. And I think that was in 2009. Okay. 2009, I started college. Yeah, Metro University. 
So I moved back to town and then... Um, Did you have a job out here at the time? Yeah. So like I said, I've always worked in the service industry. So I got a job. What was my first job when I moved back? I can't. <laughs> Didn't that keep you around the oh weed and cocaine though? God. <laughs> like, there's so, and I've done, I mean, everyone needs to be a waiter, waitress, something food service. Like there's no way you should not experience that at some time. I was like a pool waitress at a country club. Uh, uh, no, it, things. But it, yeah, there's, there's this kind of stuff everywhere. It absolutely did. Um, yeah. Because it is in that industry, you know, it's just kind of the way that, that you industry is. You move, you yeah, gotta, like, yeah, you know, but something I've been good at ever since I was young is like when I set my mind to something, like, I'll do it. And there were multiple times growing up, even with my crew of friends, where I would take like three to six months off of smoking or drinking and yeah. just go sober, just because yeah. I was like, I'm just tired of like, I'm an anxious person and I love, um, I, I've realized as I got older, like, I live, not love, but I'm most, most comfortable in situations that I can either control or predict. Yeah. And when, uh, when it's unpredictable, I get really um, anxious. And when I'm consist like when I'm high too for too frequently or like drunk too frequently, I feel like I'm losing control of my mind. Yeah, and you, I, you li quite literally are. Yeah, and yeah. I hated that. So like I, I would regularly just take little hiatuses and be sober for like six months or whatever. So I've always been good at just like kind of separating myself even while mm -hmm. still hanging out. So I did that while I was a server and I became a bartender too. Um, you know, my friends would drink all the time. And my first three years, after shortly moving back, um, I didn't drink or smoke. I was completely sober for like three and a half years. Oh, wow. Okay. Working in the service industry. Well, I think it's actually good because you get to see people intoxicated. And uh, like, yeah. if you ever want to go sober or, or whatever, go to a bar, bartend, be in the mix, be there late night, and you see how it looks, and you're like, oh, and you know I'm clearly a fan of the party and the social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a total balance approach because like, once you see the ones that get like that, but then stay like that as a lifestyle versus like a one time good night fun, whatever, it's so unappealing. I think it's such a good checks and balances to be like, that's not me. Yeah. And it it, it, it is because like you, you quickly realize that you're like, normally I'd be in the mix of looking like that. And, yeah. You know, when you're sober, it doesn't look great when you're drunk. It, it, it's all. It's <laughs> so all, you see Instagram the next yeah, day. It's all you fun. Know? You're like, you're, you're taking all these pictures. <laughs> these are great. You, you, you like look at them. You're like, these are terrible. What, <laughs> yeah. what was I thinking? Like, Paris filter. Quick. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, let's just forget this ever happened and we'll, we'll call it good. Um, so I'd managed to keep myself out of that for a long time while I was serving and bartending and I was in school. So probably ended up being really helpful to my yeah. success in, in college. Um, but I, I, I'm trying to think of my first job when I moved back and I can't remember, but I know I ended up working at Fridays. Okay. And so I worked at Fridays. Um, I started as a server and then became a cocktail server. Did you have all the flair? And then, oh, well, actually it wasn't required. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, I know. That's a bummer. Yeah, okay. we, so we, used to, we still had it to this day. We used to talk about it though, like and make fun of it from <laughs> office space. Like, where's your 32 pieces of flair? Because yeah, yeah. all we had to wear was like one pin that said Fridays, I think, oh, with your name on it. Ooh, but okay. yeah, so it was a little more laid back than that. Um, but we joked about it a lot. But dude, no, now I'm cross it's all the flair. Like wrist wrap, dude, shin guard. Dude. Okay, I digress. Keep going. That's like just a sidebar. That's one thing. Every time I coach before we start the workout, like my literal routine before we start the workout is like, all right, guys, now's a good time. Use the restroom, put on your workout flair, yeah, get your okay, water, yes. chewing gun, say your last prayers, oh. call your mom. Um, I, I say the same thing every time. So like workout flair is a real thing. But uh, no, we weren't required to wear flair, but we had like a ridiculous red shirt with a black uh, collar and it just, yes. it looked, in my opinion, dumb. But anyways, it wasn't flattering to me. Um, so I started as a server, became a cocktail server in the bar, and then I, I became a bartender after that. And working in the bar was probably some of the best money I've ever made, I but it's it. also the most erratic hours I've ever had. Okay. Um, so, you know, bar closes at two. Yeah. Last call is one forty five. We close at two. Um, and then you, you got to clean up and do your side work and, you know, pay people out and make sure everything's good to go. And by the time you leave, you're lucky to get out of there on an early night by 3 a.m. Uh, like yeah. lucky. That's yeah. lucky. And so, you know, you get home, you probably eat because you haven't ate all shift and you have to unwind. And, you know, I'd be going to bed at like four, four thirty in the morning. Uh. And sleep to something like 11 or 1 or something the next well, day? I was young and I was in school, so I'd sleep till like oh. 8 and then oh, go to school. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, it worked for a, a year or two. You can ask my wife now. Um, You know, when we first met, she was like, you never sleep. Yeah. Because I, I was that's when I was doing this. She's like, I don't know how you never sleep. And, like, I, you know, I was young and ambitious, and I was like, I don't need sleep. Like, yeah, sleep, um, sleep. <laughs> yeah, right? So I wasn't getting much. But uh, crazy hours bartending. But, man, it's amazing money. I always tell people, like, if you want to make a quick buck, like, in, you know, you're looking for something to do, like, look into bartending because, yeah. like, there were busy nights. I'd walk home with, like, $900,000, like, in my pocket. Really? Yeah. 
Wow. Like, it's absolutely nuts. Um, I, I guess you have to be at a good bar that, say, that's busy. Some of those are coveted spots. Yeah. But, I mean, for the most part, you know, you could probably count on at least a couple hundred. I, slow nights at the bar were like 250, 300 bucks. So okay. it's just quick money. And, like, yeah. you know, it's not, it, it's not easy work by any means, but it's not um, complicated work, I guess, is the way I'd put it. It doesn't take a lot of, like, a ton of training. You know, you do have to be good at it. But so I did that through through college all four years yeah okay when did you graduate college um 2014 2014 okay so yeah i started in 2009 and i graduated 2008 i think and it took me five and a half years to graduate what did you major in um i double majored in um, biology and chemistry chemistry i always tell okay. people that it's just biochemistry um but they don't have that major at metro university so um, I double majored in biology and chemistry. That's but crazy. But then I just say biochemistry. Um, and those are hard majors. Those uh, are like the athletes major. I was a comm major. I mean, the, business no, comm because right. I played lacrosse. So yeah. it was like, well, I mean, my business, schedule. you're using it. I'm not yeah. really like, yeah. using mine per se. Like, well, I, I do. You kind of well, do. When people talk about, like, uh, you know, like, you, 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 like, I know, like, some human anatomy and, like, some processes that happen in the body, like, biochemically and stuff like that, that I can help you with, like, proteins, like, oxidation and muscle protein synthesis and stuff like that. But like most people don't care. So it's like, like, so I like, I don't use it on like a daily basis. I would say I was actually supposed to go to med school and I didn't, which is still a point of contention till this day with my family. Um, they're not, I mean, you're kind of in medical school teaching a CrossFit gym at some level, a very watered down medical situation. Uh, I mean, you're saving lives. That's, I mean, no, I'm not being funny. That's for real. No, that's something I'm very passionate about is that now I work in, um, preventive healthcare. Yeah. And, I'm very a firm believer and passionate about that. But that's like, you know, we could talk. What kind of doctor did you want to be? Um, I wanted to get into orthopedics, like sports medicine. So I wanted to work with athletes. So like, regardless, I've always known I wanted to work with like athletes and people being like fit and stuff like that. So, you know, um, just kind of went in a different direction. And the evolution of that was after I moved back to town, um, I hadn't gone sober yet, um, so I was still, like, smoking weed and drinking and um, living with my girlfriend at the time. And we ended up breaking up, and I remember one of the last conversations we had was she, like, legit, we'd been together, like, three and a half years. It's probably, like, it's me being vulnerable. It's probably the most hurtful thing anyone's ever said to me um, Uh. is uh, she's like, yeah, I just don't really feel like you're going anywhere with your life. Wow. And, like, we'd been together three and a half years. Like, I felt like we were in love, whatever. And I was just like, damn. I was like, well, I don't care when people I don't know tell me mean things because I just don't care. Like, social media, I don't know you. Like, you could say whatever you want and I'll just brush it off. But I think the things that hurt the most are from people you love. And it's Absolutely. like, you know, you know me probably better than anyone else right now. And you're telling me you think I'm pretty much worthless. There's probably a level of truth to that. Mm-hmm. And so um, after we, we split up, I just decided to like you turn my life at the time even though you know we'd taken already that fork in the road after my buddy passed away and um i was like i just i was like i need to figure my life out like yeah i don't want to be that person that's like going nowhere quote unquote um which i don't think i was but like i've just always been that person that's like i'll show you um yeah. and so i went completely sober okay like cold turkey Next day, like, stop drinking, stop smoking weed. I would even smoke cigarettes now and then. Like, when I was drunk, I would like to smoke cigarettes, and I used to be drunk quite a bit. So, like, okay. I think I was kind of a smoker, too. Um, a uh, cigarette smoker. And so I just completely quit all that cold turkey, and I started working out. Uh, like, what, would you just walk into, like, a 24-hour and, like, start lifting weights, or what would you do? Yeah, because, like, growing up, you know, this is, like, parts of the story we missed. Growing up, I was into um, exercise, like, lifting. Okay, so, so you had some yeah. base knowledge. Yeah, to go back in the story, like, my brother, when he was in high school, he's 10 years older than me. Um, he was, like, a power lifter in high school, and we used to walk to the rec center every day, and it was about a mile and a half away. We'd walk to the rec center, and he would go work out and do bodybuilding in the gym for two hours, and my brother, my other brother and I, who's two years older than me, would go outside and play for, like, two or three hours. Like, my brother talks about it till this day, my older one that used to drag us along. He's like, that was so mean for me to, like, go work out for two or three hours, just leave you guys outside. You know, I was six, my brother was eight, and then he was 16. <laughs> and you know, we used to go, like, because the rec center had a, a door downstairs, so you could see the gym going, like, hey, are you done? He's like, go away. You're like, not done yet, so we'd have to wait. So we did that a lot. So I was exposed to exercise at a young age, and then that same brother, I lived with him for a year in high school. Um, I lived in Great Falls, Montana, when okay. he was a recruiter in the Marine Corps. 
And um, I really got into um, bro lifting then, quote unquote. Nice. And what we consider bro lifting is like curls, bench press, um, anything that's like not legs. Um, and so I had already had like that history of like kind of being in the gym scene, but just not super committed um, at that young age. I, you know, I was there, like I said, like n- n- naturally athletically like talented. So like things kind of came natural. I had a decent level of strength. Um, and I, I'd fallen away from that when I moved to the mountains, became a snowboarder, you know, there wasn't really time to work out or anything. Well, that's not true. I told myself there wasn't time to work yeah, out. Yeah. And um, I just fell away from that. And once my girlfriend and I split and I decided to like turn my life around, like I just turned back to exercise. Yeah. Um, Yoga and choice. like, well, and it, it, to a certain extent, like I've had old friends tell me they're like, oh, you just traded one addiction for another. And I was like, well, absolutely. That's but I think, lot, yeah. I, yeah, I think one's yeah. better for me than the other one. Yeah. Um, you know, instead of doing substances, I'm just exercising a bunch now. So I turned to exercise, um, went cold turkey, just completely sober. And um, I started going to the gym five days a week. And I was going to 24 hour at the time and just doing some bro lifting. And I actually came up with a sweet split um, that I, I thought was perfect. and. You know, maybe it was for my young 21 year old self or whatever, 22 year old self. And um, where I would I would lift on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and then I would have my cardio days on um, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And I would always run like at least five miles. So I was like okay. running a lot at least and doing my bro lifting. And so I had a very low body fat percentage and I was very defined, but I was not big. I was 150 pounds. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So okay, like, that's yeah. lean. Yeah. Like people used to come up to me at the gym and be like, how did you get so lean? And I was like, I don't know. That's easy. But at the time, I was very strict with my diet. Okay. I was running way too much. Um, and I was just lifting. But I wasn't giving myself enough time to recover and enough yeah. protein to get bigger. So I was just really lean. Um, yeah. And so I thought I was in amazing shape. Like, I was course. like, oh, dude, like I'm in such good shape. Like I'll, I'll show these guys how, like how, what real shape is like. Um, <laughs> and then my brother... Um, Roth, Raphael's his name, I call him Roth. Um, he lived in the Springs and so did my sister at the time. And they got into this thing called CrossFit. Oh, they started it first. Wait, where are you in the line of your siblings? I'm the youngest. You're the, you're the baby? Okay, so no wonder you're acting a fool. The babies are always running out there crazy. Um, I, See, I, I'm the oldest, so I'm always oh, like, for they, sure. I have few younger brothers. I'm like, I'll feel you. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. Um, they're like, all successful in their own right. You're like the leader funny. of the pack. Yeah, well, and it's funny because it was all boys and I was the girl, but it set me up in my life very well because. A lot of times in my business, I was like the only female in the room. But anyways, um, that's funny. How did they get exposed to it? Um, you know, I don't know if I've ever asked them that story. Uh, was it in Colorado? Yeah, because they were living in the Springs at the time. You know what? I, I think I do know. Okay, so my sister Desiree, I call her Des, a.k.a. Les. Um, I, I like to give her a hard time if she's listening. Yeah, sorry, Des, I love you. Um, She has always, not always, but she's been into exercise like for a long time she used to work at 24 hour as a like turbo kick coach oh okay and like do like you know kind of not like zumba but turbo kicks like zumba but you like it's like for real stuff. cardio like, um if you've ever who used to like billy blanks i yeah, think yeah, used yeah. To stuff like that so she she used to teach classes like that i don't know it's called turbo kick i don't remember the other ones anyways and um she you might know this name um a guy that worked there with her at the time his name was chris hoppy um he oh yeah, at, that color. Yeah, yeah. He, he worked OG at CrossFit twenty. Yeah, he worked yeah. at twenty four hour with her as well, and he was doing CrossFit. Oh, okay. And um, he was the owner of Progressive Fitness CrossFit. Yeah. In, um, the Springs for a while. So I don't know if he's the owner at this. Anyways, I don't think so. That's how she got exposed. It's like Chris oh, Hoppy was doing CrossFit. Small world. Okay. He introduced my sister at twenty four hour, and then she somehow introduced my brother to it because my other brother was also living in the Springs. So like, was this military brother? Yeah. So I'm the only one of my siblings that didn't join the military. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, okay. I'm a rebel. Like I I always thought I had a better idea of how to do this thing called life. Um, and maybe I do now, but it took a long time. The but anyways, always get the passes uh, though. Oh, dude. Baby, you guys get extra time. <laughs> well, you, you want to know. Dude, we like, have faith in you though. Don't worry. You want to know the funny thing about being the youngest is, and this is a very true statement because I've been yet to be proven wrong by anyone is your parents stop having kids when they finally get it right. <laughs> I mean, I always we might say agree that. to no, disagree you, on that, yeah, but you know, yeah. It's, it's funny because like anyone else that's the baby always agrees. They're like, yeah. And then anyone that's like not the baby's like, 
come on now. Do we need and those I'm like, well, I'm like, well no. you know, your parents stopped having kids after the last <laughs> one, so they must have got it right. And I am like the most talented and best looking of all my oh siblings. Oh my gosh, so I so hope they're all listening they're, right no, now. No, they are. Then they would totally the just ex. be like, dude, this guy. Yeah. And like, you know, then I, I think that's like the baby syndrome too. So we sure. always think that we're special because, yeah. you know, the focus was on me. Um, growing. Anyways, um, <laughs> so somehow my sister gets my brother into it. Okay. And um, I remember like this vividly. I was living, um, I had moved in with some of my friends from high school in a house on 128th and Holly. Okay. Um, his name's JP. Shout out JP. Um, he's a really cool guy. Um, and so I was living there and I would run like a mile and a half down the street to this Fitness 19 was a gym i'd run there do my lifting and then run home so like and i thought that was my warm-up and cool down well it's like that was like a four mile run every day um anyways four miles isn't a warm-up guys um and so i would do that and so i remember one day my brother came to visit and i think i'd heard that they were like doing cross i don't i never even looked into it because i was under the impression i was like what i'm doing is superior yeah like i'm better at exercise like the baby i'm the baby like you know like i'm athletically i don't need to do whatever they do (laughs) and so my brother's doing cross he's like hey i'm gonna come to the gym with you and i was like all right cool so we went to fitness 19 just down the street and um he was doing a crossfit workout he's like hey do you want to do this with me and i was like no um i'm good like i I have my i have my routine and i was like you know in my head i was like this is what i need to do it's the best like it's you know it's giving me these uh, very lean results maybe not the most fit results but um and he's like okay he goes over and does his own thing and he was doing like lunges dumbbell lunges this was early early crossfit which you know dumbbells i feel like took a hiatus and they made their way back anyways um dumbbell lunges and kipping pull-ups and it just looked ridiculous like, yeah. uh, you know, kipping pull-ups for those people that don't understand it look ridiculous. I get it. They're like, completely ridiculous. But I, if you compete, you got to do I've it. I've like, been it on the amazing. other side of this where, yeah. I, like, I didn't know about kipping pull-ups or do them. And I was like, that looks stupid. Like, whatever that is, yeah. that looks dumb. So my brother's like, oh, you want to try it? And I was like, no, that looks dumb. And I was like, you're like, I was like, you're like flying up there. Like, it looks easy. <laughs> like, you know, that's like, do some real strict pull-ups like real people do. And those are harder. And he's like, he's like, well, oh, yeah. He's like, you think you're in good shape? And I was like, I'm in amazing shape. And he's like, okay, yeah. cool. He's like, well, you should do a CrossFit comp and like, let's see how good a shape you're in. And I'm, I'm very competitive. And I was just like, well, what is it? And he's like, um, he's like, well, you work out and um, whoever does more reps or lifts more weight or goes faster wins. And I was like, say less, yes. say okay. less, like say less. Like that has my name written all over it. Like I can exercise circles around almost anyone. This was me, the way I was thinking back then. Um, so I was like, all right, cool. So I, I signed up for a CrossFit comp before comp? ever doing it. It was called, um, oh man. Where was they, it at? It was in the Springs. They okay. don't do it anymore. Um, okay. I don't know if that, it was CrossFit SoCo, I think. Oh yeah. Um, It was their early days. They were in like a smaller facility. The walls were white. Um, Anyways, um, it was a Thanksgiving one. It was called Turkey. So it wasn't called the Turkey Challenge because we have one that's called that, but it was called like the Turkey Classic something. or something. Okay. It was individuals and teams of four, depending on what you wanted to do. And um, so I signed up for the individual and I'd never done CrossFit before, signed up for a CrossFit competition. I can't believe you did a competition with having zero experience. Well, so I had three weeks to train. Okay. So. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Um, So I I did start training. Okay. And um, my very first workout, Des, this is my sister. This is probably why I give you such a hard time is uh, she had me do Fran for my first workout. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, if you ever do a cert, that's like a lot of the level one, they do it. And there's a lot of people have never done cross. It's a very pull-ups. hard work. I was, it's uh, thrusters and pull-ups. And um, it's brutal. I did it with 65 pounds, which is the ladies' prescribed weight. Yeah. The guys' prescribed weight is 95 pounds at the time. And it took me about nine and a half minutes. Oh, did you do strict pull-ups? I did the version of pull-ups I knew how to do, which okay. was probably a bastardized version of a strict and kipping pull-up. Um, <laughs> and it took me nine and a half minutes. I remember I was like dying and I was like, damn, I've like never felt like this in exercise. The closest I would say that intensity I've ever felt was wrestling, either wrestling sure. someone else or wrestling practice. Because right, that was also very hard, but it's a different kind of very hard. This was the worst I've ever, I say the worst, it was the most intense I ever felt exercising. I'd never had that stimulus before. Okay. Um, like everything was just on fire. Like things just, it kind of, you know, all the 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 the, the dash lights are, are flashing red. That's like, things are not right in your body. And I was just like, I feel awful. Well, it took me nine and a half minutes. Not a great time, but um, the biggest motivator for me is I watched another guy come in and do it. His name is Cody Jameson. Um, shout out, Cody. He's still in the fitness realm. Um, and he did it in like sub three minutes. Right, right. It's a quick With workout. 95 pounds. So he yeah. did it with 30 pounds more than me. Yeah. Did it three times faster than I did it. 
And watching that, I quickly realized, I was like, dude, you're not in as good a shape as you thought. Yeah. And then I also realized, I was like, I think you're in a little over your head with this CrossFit hey. competition. Um, so anyways, I, I practiced a little more. They released the workouts like a week or two early. So I was practicing them. I couldn't snatch a 75 pound barbell over my head. I believe, I mean, unless you do it, it's not about strength, it's about technique yeah. and like all the things. Yeah, because like... they had hang snatches in one oh. of the workouts, which now is a very light snatch for me. Um, for but. Sure. I just couldn't figure it out. It was like, it wasn't a strength. It was more technique thing. I yeah. just couldn't figure out how to like use my hips to establish momentum to, to get it overhead. I was like trying to pull. I don't know. I remember just being really frustrated practicing the workout. I couldn't do it. And I ended up figuring it out the day of the comp. I started to wow. like figure out how to like cycle it a little bit for me. Um, anyways, so I, I do the competition and I got 10th out of 20, which oh, wasn't okay. terrible. But this was at a very early time across CrossFit yeah. where, like, it was not as competitive as it is now. Right. Like, you know, people weren't as good as they are. Like, there were some, like, outs. So Chris Hoppy did that comp he won. He freaking did really good. But <laughs> there wasn't, um, you know, like, it wasn't as competitive as it is now. So I'm not trying to discount my performance, but I don't think that would be the case if it were to happen nowadays. Well, it's a totally different animal Yeah, now. totally. And so um, there's more skill involved, too. But yeah. so and I, I ended up getting 10th. And... I'm the type of person, I hate sucking at stuff. Yeah. Like, so I was like, I don't want to suck at this or anything. And I was frustrated with myself that I sucked at it. Um, I was frustrated with myself that I thought I was in good shape. And I was quickly humbled that, like, I just wasn't in as good a shape as I thought. Mm -hmm. It's not that I wasn't in good shape. It's just, I wasn't in as good a shape as I thought. Yeah, or as the fit. Bubble, was, bubble was burst. I wasn't as fit as I thought. And so I decided, I was like, I'm going to do this CrossFit thing. Because clearly... It, and doing the comp, I saw other CrossFitters. They were shredded, the guys. Yeah. Like, you know, they were big, and they looked good. And I was like, I, I like the way they look, so, I, you know, I like to look like that. And clearly, you know, I'm not in as good a shape that I thought. So, like, I, let me do this to get myself in better shape, maybe look better, get stronger, and also not suck at it because I hate sucking at stuff. Like, I hate it. Um, I just started playing ice hockey last year, and I suck at it. And uh, <laughs> it's very humbling. Anyways, but so I sucked at it. I was like, I don't want to suck at it. I got sucked in and I just started doing it like five days a week. And the funny thing is I lived here in Denver because I was going to school and I would drive to the Springs like two or three times a week just to, to train at, to do CrossFit gym? at uh, Progressive Fitness. Was there CrossFit. nothing down here at the time? Oh, there was. So I it just wasn't like verve around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just I was so new to it. And, I, you know, I just I didn't look into it. It was just I would go do it with my brother, and my sister. Yeah. And, oh, those are like key years. And though, it was like, like time, this right? was also a time when I was single. I was in college. Like okay. I like kind of had time to to, to waste yeah. um i was still college was rough for me but i was still the type of person i didn't need to study a whole lot to grasp concepts okay. they would come like right away funny story as i didn't study for my level three right across at level three oh, and, okay. and i passed it but we can talk about that later yeah. um i've always been a good test taker so I, I had extra time so i would drive down there a couple of times three times a week sometimes and then i would do crossfit up here at 24 hour um just makeshift CrossFit. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you have to I'm make it I'm impressed they work. have some of the stuff. Like, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's definitely it, not the same. It's hard to do. Saying, yeah. I remember trying to do overhead squats with, like, the, the like, metal 25s yeah. and the bar and, like, barely being able to do it because that was too heavy for me at the time. But also, like, you know, you can't really drop the bar because yeah. the weights aren't made to Plus be dropped. Plus, you look like a, a weirdo. They didn't have, like, uh, the right type of pull-up bar. I remember one time I hung my own rings at 24 hour from the oh basketball court. This would the be basketball like influencers hoop. gone wild now. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, oh, dude, most. if you want to see a video of influencers gone wild. <laughs> we'll you know, have to like, post some of this. Um, I just got back from Hawaii and my buddy took a video of me on the beach doing 50 thrusters with a big branch. Oh my God. And I didn't know he, he was, was taking the, I, I didn't yeah. know he was taking the video and he's just like, <laughs> I remember I watched it and I was like, this is like influencers in the wild. This and I was like, guy. and I was like, you know, it seemed cool to me at the time, but now that yeah. I watched the video, I look like a douchebag. Yeah, Anyways, um. So I was doing CrossFit like down there and um, up here, makeshift. I ran into my business partner, CJ, doing CrossFit okay. at 24 hour. He hadn't been doing it. It's I think he said this is the first time he was ever exposed to CrossFit. It's, we went to high school together and okay. um, we played football together. He probably he was always better than me he probably, and he was great above me. I don't think he remembers playing football with me, but we talk about it anyways. Um, he saw me doing CrossFit at 24 hour and you know, my makeshift, whatever he says, I was doing box jumps and he's like, yeah, I remember watching you doing box jumps like really quick. And he's like, why is he going so fast? Like, you know, like, yeah. well, you don't need to go that fast. Like just do one at a time and you know, get the jump stimulus. And he asked, he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, CrossFit. And he's like, oh, okay. And he said, that's like all he'd really heard about it until he went and ended up having some friends and trying it on his own. Um, so I was doing CrossFit at 24 hour and then I really got into it and I signed up for another competition. Okay. And it was up north. I, it was the Warrior Classic, I think was the name of it. And I signed up for that. And I went up and did it. And I met um, this person, Lindsay. 
and she had just opened a gym off of like 78th and Washington, which was not that far from where I was living at the time. And she's like, oh, we're having our grand opening. You should come check it out. So I met her through that comp. I went and checked out the grand opening and I worked out there. And then I was like, I just want to go here. So then yeah. I started going there. Okay. And then I quickly like realized how much I loved it and I got into coaching. So I, I went and got my level one and I started coaching CrossFit and, um, you know, just got with my girlfriend. So I'm coaching CrossFit, girlfriend, college, full-time job. And so I was doing that for a while. Yeah, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot at the time, but now that I think about it, that I'm seems like, like a weight lot. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's like, a whole load right there. Yeah. I told you I didn't sleep a whole lot. Yeah, when I was, like, apparently like, not. On that age, yeah, you know, you don't need sleep when you're young. That's why you need it so much when you're older. You Facts. didn't sleep when you were younger. <laughs> um, and so I started coaching CrossFit, and that's kind of like the whole start of my CrossFit journey was like once I started coaching, like I was just, I was in. You were hooked onto it. Yeah. And I was doing CrossFit five, six times a week and coaching at least three to four times a week, if not more. I forget. Well, it was six classes a week um, minimum. That's a lot. It's a lot of energy. Yeah. We used to do trades back then. I don't know yeah. if CrossFit gyms still do. We don't. Um, where it's like, yeah, you have to coach a minimum amount of classes to get oh, a free membership. A lot membership. of gyms still do that. Yeah. Um, well, so and, when did when did Mob come into play? Oh, this was years later. So, like, the funny story is uh, the gym I went to is called Eminence. Um, it's still open. And um, I was coaching there for a while. And Mob opened, I think, like, a year or something after okay. Eminence. And I remember thinking, and they were very close to where I lived at the time. Like, they were literally, like, a stone's throw okay. down the street. And I remember, like, thinking of them as more as, like, rivals. Like, oh, this other cross Well, there wasn't gym. a lot of us back yeah. in the day. So it was, like, other it was like, high gym. school rivalry. <laughs> like, it was so JV. But um, but there wasn't a lot of people doing it. It totally, it totally, the, the niche, like, community CrossFit used to have it it's still kind of there but like it was like in the beginning it was like very much yeah. like this community where everyone knew each other and like so for sure it was like you know like who, who's the new kid on, on the block or whatever it was mob and I remember they opened and like I had never really been there but I just immediately had this like uh bad taste in my mouth about them just because I felt like you know like like who's this coming in my territory like you know the good gym's the one I go to yeah, um you know yeah. I feel like people think like that um and I ended up um, stopping coaching at Eminence, um, and I went and tried some different gyms, just looking for a different gym. And I went to some nice ones, didn't really like them. And I went to Mob, and like it was not nice. Okay. Like the equipment wasn't good. It was in an old um, auto store, so it smelled kind of like oil and gas just okay. all the time. Like that smell never went away. And CrossFit usually is like a dirty garage. Like, yeah. That's kind of the vibe. And like, this was definitely. still at the time when that was acceptable, yeah. in my opinion. Um, and so I walked in there, and the gym wasn't the nicest. The equipment wasn't the best, but man, the people were amazing. Yeah. Like, Johanna was the owner at the time, and this other guy, Dave, and like this other coach, Kevin, was there, and like Mary, and like they were just so nice. Like as soon as I walked in the doors, and they started talking to me. I just felt like, like this is home. You know, yeah. like the people made it. It wasn't, it wasn't the location. It wasn't the facility. It wasn't the equipment. It was the people. It was the community. Yeah. They Community's made me everything. join that gym because um, I just the way I felt. I was like, man, it's just these people are amazing, and I want to be a part of whatever these people are doing. And so, I ended up joining Mob probably two years after Mob had opened. So Mob had been open for two years. Um, so I'd been doing CrossFit at this point, like three-ish years at least. Okay, so still pretty new. Yeah, and like coaching it for at least two. So I'd been coaching. And by this time, I think I got my level two. I got my CrossFit gymnastics certification, power athlete, CrossFit football. Did um, you have obviously in mind that you'd want to own a gym at some point? I mean, if you're doing all these certs and all these qualifications, or is it more like you just like the knowledge? Yeah, so it, it, I think it's a little bit of both. Like, you know, I've always just been fascinated by – CrossFit methodologies and fitness methodologies in general, but mostly CrossFit ones because I feel like they are the ones that hold true and that there's no BS in them. Um, mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I've always wanted to, like, work with athletes or people, but I don't think I'd ever, like, had an ambition. If you would have asked me at that age, I don't think I would have told you, like, yeah, I'm going to be a gym owner. Like, I think yeah. maybe in the back of my head it was like, oh, that sounds like a cool thought or something. Um, but I was still in school. I had different plans, you know. Yeah. I was, trying to pursue medical school or whatever I was going to do. So like for me at that time, it was more of a hobby and I was very passionate about it, but I hadn't committed to it a hundred percent yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I would say I didn't plan on being a gym owner. No. And the opportunity kind of arose ran somewhat randomly. Um, I, the evolution of it will make sense um, if I tell it. Um, 
but no, I didn't. I didn't okay. plan on owning a CrossFit gym. Yeah. Well, I mean, most things don't go to plan. It's funny though, also that you didn't love school, but then you were in college doing these certs, like for like you were doing all this like intentional steps to learn. It just wasn't school, like because I identified with that a lot. I mean, school wasn't my thing, but I think they had lacrosse. Like I wanted to play collegiately, so like that was my barrier of like get your work done, which I would have anyways. I just didn't enjoy it. You know, it's like doing the the piece of work at like burpees. Like I don't want to do burpees, and I'm gonna do them because like yeah. So it's like. The burpees of life of like, yeah. all right, I'm going to go to school. We're going to get this done because, yeah, we got to get it done. So one box checks the other. But it's funny, though, like my nerve was I don't really like school. I don't enjoy it. I love the social. I love the sports, whatever. But on the flip side, now when I can learn about my things, what I'm passionate about, I'm all for the knowledge and the school yeah. side of it. So it's funny how it flips. I think that evolution happens more often or more common than we would think. And I think part of it is, you know, you become more mature. But in, in college, I also realized I'm paying to be here. So this yeah. is no longer a joke. Yeah. And um you kind of get to pick the direction you want to go in college. So there's somewhat like I get to pick my classes to a certain extent within like this realm, but specifically with fitness certifications and education is like, I am choosing to do this. I want to do it. Yeah. And so I think that level of freedom, like had me more invested because I, I was choosing to do it rather than being forced. I feel yeah. like when you're younger, it's kind of like being forced. Like you just have to go to school yeah. and like you have to do your prereqs and like you have to do these classes. And it's it was no longer have to. It was you get to and you're choosing to. So I, I just, I think the level of seriousness I took it with and passion was a lot more prevalent because I was choosing to do it rather than sure. being forced to do it. For sure. And college was kind of similar to that. Well, so tell me now, um, Mob is a thriving, we've been, at the time, and since 2008, 2009, 10, when you got in, cross, we had more CrossFit gyms per capita in Colorado than anywhere else in the country. It, you know, this huge wave, this huge expansion, and then we saw this major decline because it, it's expensive to keep up. You got to know the business side. I worked with Reebok on for a while and c So I was on the business and the athletic side, so I got to see how much some of the businesses weren't run like businesses, so it wasn't a surprise to me when I saw a lot of them phase out. How at Mob have you done such a good job, not only maintaining it, but maintaining it to thrive? I mean, it's a hard business to keep up and you guys have done a great job. Yeah, I, thank you. You know, I'm always, I think the key to some of our success and my business partner would attest to this is I'm the type of person that's like, I'm always trying to improve, yeah. whether it's myself or my business or my coaching or whatever. It's like, I'm just always trying to be better. Like I regularly will give or ask for feedback on my class that I coach, I will do like a mental recap on the class I just coach every time. And I've been coaching for almost 13, 12 or 13 years. And, you know, I think just that drive to be better, people see it. Yeah. And I think part of that becomes its own, like it sells itself when they see that people are invested at just making things better. Also, like I'm truly passionate about fitness yeah. and i'm truly passionate about crossfit and its methodologies and i think it's the best way to get healthy and fit on the planet and people can see that and it's it's intoxicating when you see someone that's doing something they're passionate about that passion is intoxicating um it's just it sucks you in and it makes you just want to be a part of it and so when you see people with this passion just doing amazing things you're like man i just want to like be a part of that yeah. and i feel like there's a level of that at our i hope there is anyways um because i am truly passionate about what we do and like I don't feel like I just like talk the talk. I try to like walk the walk and um, that passion and that drive, I think is a reason for some of our success. Another part, I had a good foundation to start from mm -hmm. that was built on community. Um, you know, I didn't open this gym. I just became the owner. So it did have a solid foundation built. Um, what the previous owner, owners, but owner specifically, Johanna was very good at was she was just such a good community person. Yeah, the community is um, what I think yeah, keeps so it like, open. I think I'm like better on like the business side and like kind of more like the like logistical like, yeah logistical stuff but um you know she's very good at the community side so we had that great foundation so that was already a part of it so like the community is the main reason why we stay or like why we're successful is just getting people to feel like they're a part of something yeah maybe even bigger than themselves where it's like you know I'm not just doing this just for myself for my own personal benefits there's a level of that but it's like man we're a group of people doing this together yeah and I, I think that's well, when you get and as time goes on, we get older, we get disconnected from family, friends. You might have your family, your relationship, but you need that outside 
community of showing up and the days you know we've, tr we've done this now for x amount of years there's days you don't want to go or you're tired or whatever there's many days even now it kind of got me back into it after like being like totally burned out was showing up for my community like i really didn't care about the workout but i was gonna go see my friends or i was gonna go check in with them or they knew i was gonna they were expecting me to be there as i was expecting them to be there so that's kind of what kept me in it but that was also like my fuel for my life, like for what I'm doing my, I'm with my varsity people that are business owners or parents or good community leaders. Like these are good, what I call like varsity humans, people that I want to be around. So whether I'm going hard and going towards the games or towards a comp or towards just getting through the week, I just want to go be around my people. Mm. And like, that's more than enough. Yeah. It's like your tribe. Yeah. I also tell people it's like that, uh, you know, there's like a podcast or something like best hour of your day. And it's just talking uh, yeah. about how my like, dad always says that yeah. cr CrossFit classes should be like the best hour of your day. Um, yeah. And so I, I'm a big proponent of that when it comes to what we do at the gym for those multiple reasons. That's like, you know, I'm passionate about it, but also I understand for people, it is their, their outlet and they get to see their friends and mm -hmm. like, there's that sense of community. And I think like the last thing that drives us to be successful is um, I'm always on the cusp of like innovation, I suppose, when it comes to CrossFit or maybe just in general, where it's like, I'm always looking like, what's CrossFit going to look like 10 years from now? Like, not just like, what does it look <laughs> so like strong. right now? Like, what's it going to so look like things. 10 years from right now? And a lot of it for me has been, there's going to be the evolution of it's no longer this grungy garage gym or whatever. It's like, it's going to turn into like, what else do you have? So like, I try to make sure we're on the cusp of like, not just offering good coaching, not just offering a good community, but also offering a clean facility mm -hmm. with good equipment and amenities. The facility's and beautiful, by the way. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, screens. You guys are ahead of the... I hadn't seen it in years because I got way out of it and I happened to do a comp last year. I didn't think I even knew that you owned it. Like I was so disconnected from the crew because I was so far in it, but I was like, oh my God, this gym is gorgeous. Like this is like Beverly Hills of gyms out here. I don't know what's going on, but... In the really CrossFit nice. world, it is yeah. very nice. Yeah. Um, we didn't think we were going to get it. It's 13,000 square feet. Um, you know, we have like those big ceiling fans and we have an infrared sauna. We have showers and locker rooms. Most CrossFit gyms don't have that. Um, you know, we're very blessed at, at the facility that we do have. And I recognize the science, but I'm also like looking for ways like even now or just every day. Like, how can I make this better? How yeah. can I make this Never better? Never get like, too comfortable. Just like the some better equipment. Like, could we like install like some type of pool or something? I don't know. Like, you know, just yeah. like or a steam room. I, I don't know. Just trying to be ambitious like that. Like we offer towel service and stuff like that too. So um, I think, you know, the combination of all those things is what continues to drive the success of successful businesses. It's yeah. like, you know, if you have passion and you have good people and people see that you actually care, I think that's what is going to end up driving it to be hopefully successful yeah. I, in my opinion that's a recipe for success my professional opinion that is a recipe for success there you so go. if you if you're passionate and you chase that passion and you just work towards it every day don't just sit there and do nothing um you'd be surprised how far you can go like i'm a big believer of hard work pays off absolutely and you don't always know like the path the plan the destination you got to just show up do the reps, kind of let it play out. And I, I love that you shared your entire story on that because I, I think one of the most intimidating places to walk into in this world is a CrossFit gym. Like you see ripped people, oh, totally. everyone's naked, the place is nice, they're lifting heavy weights. It's a hard place to walk into. And you think everybody came from like a D1 program or they're this and that, and that's not the case at all. Like most people started, I came from a top 20 D1 program and I had five bands my first day to do pull-ups. So whatever you're coming from, whatever your backstory is, like you can walk in and know that there's people there that have probably walked a similar path to you and it doesn't look like that at all. Well, and like, we'll meet you where you're at. And you yeah. know, CrossFit, they, CrossFit HQ is, they're doing better. They haven't done us a lot of favors with marketing. This is a whole the, other podcast the, right yeah, here. Like, but yeah, I'm, the, I'm deep the, on like, the business side. So the, like. um, the first, you know, <laughs> while for CrossFit, their their marketing was forging elite fitness. Well, that word already like Ugh. kind of phases out like 90% of your yeah. normal, like, uh, consumer and then um you know our our mascot was this shredded clown that would throw up when he worked out so I it's like called so pukey yeah, and it's like it. that's not appealing to most of the population and most of the people that do grow like my average demographic is mid 30s to 40s just a normal person like just wanting to work out yeah. four to five times a week have and a like, good time yeah, go hard. And, yeah. Be, yeah be around other good people i do think the number one thing to echo the your statements on hard work is that authenticity like when you have a coach a leader a business owner someone that authentically bleeds it and you can just see that that like the purpose is so aware and like you can so see them there in alignment 
I think that's where like is like the main sell point. Everything at once you have that baseline, the hard work, the nice gym, the ambition to constantly improve, all that plays in. You've got to have like that step one of genuine. That's like a it. big, big thing for me is that I tell people, um, especially being a business owner, a coach, a parent. I, I'm not a parent. Well, I actually have a baby on the way. Um, oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Do, is that. Does everyone know that? Yeah. And yeah. They do now. Okay. Yeah. My wife. Oh, okay. My wife made the official Instagram posts yes. like the last weekend. So. Oh, um, she's, that's huge. Okay. She's 21 weeks. We're having a boy. So. What? Um, I'm 36, and all I. Right. All right. Come through. Okay. <laughs> this is big. It is. I'm 36, and I don't have kids, and so okay. you know, um, I'll be 37 by the time my child's born, and. You got to, don't, don't, don't buy into the stage. I'm 42, almost 43, don't have kids. Yeah. Might adopt, I have no idea what the path's ahead. We're baby steps universe, yeah. don't. So don't like, I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, you know, it's never too late. You know, uh, Al Pacino just had a kid and he's 82. Okay, that's a lot though. He's 82. That, yeah, that's too much. Yeah. Uh, Al Pacino and um, who's Robert the other dude? Yeah, yeah. It, come on now. Like, like, come on guys. You're gonna like, miss like middle well, school. Well, I feel like, I, I don't know with modern technology, but that's kind of unfair to your kid because, like, I feel like by the time they're even like maybe in middle school or high school, yeah. like you're gonna be dying. No, a hundred percent. Like, like, like you know, by the time your kid's eighteen, you're ninety eight or ninety nine. Yeah, like, no, eh, you're bad not chance. throwing the football. <laughs> yeah, you're not doing a lot of things. Like yeah, so dude, you're not. You're thirty six so, is not ninety eight. Like, no, you're good. no. You're so right. it's never too late. You're but right. um, I don't have kids. But um, the point I was getting at was, I think when you're in a point of authority, leadership starts from the top down. And this is important to me. And this is something I preach to my business partner, my gym manager, my coaches, um, and just people in my life is like, it always trickles from the top down. And you need to start, if you're in a, a position of leadership, it needs to start with you. And I always tell myself as a business owner, it starts with me. Like it always starts with me. If I want my people to do something, I need to do it. Yeah. If I want my coaches to do something, I need to do it. If I want my members to do something, I need to do it. And so, like, I'm a big proponent on, like, from the top bottom. Like, it needs to trickle down. You need to lead by example. Yeah. Like, don't be a boss. Be a leader. And if you're a boss, you're not going to get far in life. Leaders are people that, like, leaders say, I'll go first. Bosses say, you pull me behind you guys till we get to the destination. And so, it's like, it's so important to me to be a leader. Amen. Like, I, I, I agree. by example. Yeah, I was gonna say attitude reflects leadership always. Like you can't, there's no shortcut to like, well, I have this degree in this demographic and I have this and this, follow me. People, that's not the way it works anymore, especially yeah. our young people. Like you gotta have the ethos of authentically walking the path first. Yeah, I so. never even talk about my degrees. So people that listen to this might be like, <laughs> What? What I mean, degrees does he have? You're, I hope do do a lot of smart. do a lot of your people, your crew know like your full backstory. Nope. No, oh I God, wasn't planning pretty... on talking about that. So if you guys listen this to is it, how it goes. Um, that is my backstory. I'm not ashamed of it or whatever. Otherwise, I wouldn't talk about it. But um, I'll just, I just don't. It doesn't come up in normal conversation. I, I think it's huge. And so everyone that finds out about it, because I, I, you know, I live a completely different lifestyle now. Like I'm very much into exercise and fitness yeah. and health. And um, I don't do any of like that type of lifestyle anymore. And everyone that finds out about it is like, I just can't picture that being you. You know, everyone has a story. Yeah, that's why the turmeric and tequila, like every, there's all people wear hats. And that's when we come to these conversations, I never have like a destiny of the combo in mind because I know it'll always go the way it needs to. But for a fitness human, for how stereotype CrossFitters are, I think it's so important that they, they get to hear stories like this because people don't think it, it was just a straight line to the gym and you were born with abs and you're counting your macros and doing, it's not that at all. So it's funny, it opens up the door. Like, it's easy for you. I'm like, it's not. It's yeah. just, I have just made it part of my life. It's not easy. It's just a part of my life. Like working out for me isn't something that's like, oh, I'm going to try to work out tomorrow. Like it's part of my schedule. So I, like, you have to commit to it. Yeah. And again, that's the difference between that good and the great. There's yeah. like the good. You can be that snowboarder. You can be like the Sean White. All right. Well, I have a million more questions, but we're going to wrap up. Yeah. Um, Gabs, thanks for coming through. Thanks for sharing the story. I had 13 years later, I finally get to hear like the yeah. backstory. No, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'd love to have you on our podcast. Um, off the couch. Say less, I'm in. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to like bring this up too much, but I remember watching you as a younger cross. Really? Um, I used to go to the games. You went to the games. Um, we did. And just, you know, really thinking that was really cool. And, um, yeah, so I would love oh, to talk you. about that when we have you on. Let's ours. go. I will. Um, I haven't talked about any of that stuff in a while. Oh, we man. were in such like a. No, I still remember a, like a zone. <laughs> I think I'm one of those like old school kind of like oh, I miss the old days of CrossFit. I know we're I know, getting to that age. I think I'm getting old. Um, but like I remember that, and like you know, Front Range was like the leader of the game for a while, yeah, and yeah. they had that really young girl, Colleen. Oh yeah, I coached. She was my so I played the cross, coached mm -hmm. at Grandview, and she was one of my kiddos, and mm -hmm. I brought my whole team into to come like just try CrossFit. 
really just to get him to like work out and do something different. And Colleen loved it. And like a year later, she was kicking our ass. So I was like, what did I do? Like, what happened here? Yeah, I remember. No, like, she's a rock star. Anyone that was from Colorado, I'd always cheer for at the games. Oh, so, like, my dude. Yeah. You, Colleen, That's how it should like, be. Front range. Um, my favorite crossfitter of all time is Matt Chan. Um, okay. I still see him in the grocery into you, store dude, by so me. Like, yeah, yeah, that might yeah. be weird. Sorry, like I don't want to make it weird, but you are my favorite we have a crossfitter. Soccer in the house, yeah. uh, you won the Titan Games too. That was really cool. Oh, I um, forgot about that. Job. Yeah, oh, man, I, I'm a fanboy when it comes. We yeah. didn't even get into that. There's I'm still a, like a crew of us that all live close together. And we like run into each other at the that's grocery so store. Cool. I'm not even kidding. I'm a big fanboy of crossfit. Yeah. Like I get fanboyed out when I see Kevin Ogar still. Like I'm like, oh my dude, yeah. See, this is all the OG. These are I try not to like let it come out when I see these people. That's just like. Like, I think they're okay with I, it. I used to like yell at these people in the in, yeah. the, in the freaking crowds, like "Let's go." Um, we were like before Instagram was even a thing, so we missed it. I miss it. I miss it. I remember one year there was regionals in there. You uh, go. Boulder. Oh my God. We'll remember have to unpack. That? Yeah. Anyway, this. sorry. Yeah. Like we could talk. Well, so wait. Before that, where do we find? Tell me where your website. Where do we find CrossFit Mob? What do you want to share? Yeah, my business. Uh, it's www.crossfit-mob.com. Uh, you can book a free trial. We offer free week. Come check it out. Uh, we're also on um, social media, CrossFit Mob. Uh, if it's TikTok, it's uh, Mind Over Body Fit. And then my personals is The Gabriel Show because that's what it should be. This yeah. is the best show that I watch, which is my show. There you go, <laughs> except for this. And on the baby. And my parents uh, stopped <laughs> having kids when they finally got it right. <laughs> Watch out for those young ones. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate you. Go drop in and do a workout. I can't say enough good things uh, about their space, about this human. We'd love to have you. Um, and just like the OG ethos you've had for CrossFit and the love for the game is Thank is you. Contagious. Thank you so much for having me. This has been, this has been great. Cheers. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.